Hello my friends and everybody that found their way to this video. <laughs> it's probably important for you. Um, greetings and love. Uh, this is Wolfgang uh, with my healing circle and uh, tools for ascension. I pray that everything uh, that comes from this video will be for the highest good in divine harmony with the most benevolent outcomes. Amen. Um, uh, past life regressions uh, are definitely a wonderful entryway or initiation uh, to the mysteries of life. Um, it's just, I mean, there is nothing like experiencing uh, for yourself how you lived in a past life and uh, maybe even go through the dying process and come out on the other end, you know, on the higher dimensions or even travel in dimensions. And uh, when personally, when I perform past life regressions, uh, I do so with my clients only after I have introduced them uh, to the higher self that is basically the divine part, the soul part, the eternal part of them that is full of knowledge and wisdom and love and to the inner child uh, which is you could say the innocent part the part of you that represents maybe the subconscious in a western understanding and of course, you know, uh, the spirit guides, um, the spirit beings that are there to help and assist us, and maybe the totem animals. And of course, um, the uh, divinities, how I call them, you know, the different traditions, um, they uh, have different divinities, you know, for the Christians. Um, there is uh, Jesus and uh, Mother Mary. Um, I, I personally work a uh, lot with uh, Mother Mary. She brings this wonderful <sighs> mother energy and she's always there. Um, many times we can smell her roses. Um, a lot of people see her and I mean for, for me it's uh, not a big deal, you know, for, but for other people, you know, this is a big deal and it helps in their faith. Uh, but I also, uh, you know, work with uh, totem animals, have them explain um, themselves how they work um, to the clients or um, like, uh, I work a lot with Archangel Michael, I mean, I don't do anything without Archangel Michael, he's the bodyguard, he's the cop, <sighs> to make sure everything is alright, and we are protected and guided, and, um, uh, but, uh, basically, you know, any divine beings, like, uh, Bodhisattvas, uh, Kuan Yin, uh, White Buffalo Woman, uh, everybody, you know, comes. Uh, when I call on them. Um, so, without uh, this kind of uh, introduction um, to those divinities, and also I, I teach um, how to uh, take love from the earth and the sky and draw it into the heart and project it, uh, that's really important. Without that knowledge, I do not take anybody into a past life. Um, so, uh, because I think these are very important tools to have um, when you uh, visit those past lives, we never know what we're going to encounter there. And, um, actually, uh, also, uh, 
before we even go into past lives, we will always consult uh, with the inner child and see if it has any complaints, if it has any suggestions, and uh, uh, also have the inner child explain to the client how he or she will interact um, with the uh, client uh, in daily life. And then, you know, uh, we have them exchange love. I mean, in a, not just smiling, but, you know, projecting energy. It's a very, very tangible uh, thing, and many clients just cry. <laughs> it is, it's wonderful <laughs> to do that. So, um, I will um, tell, tell uh, um, stories now about uh, past lives. Uh, just kind of like adventure stories, you know, around the campfire. Um, the reason is that it will probably uh, widen, you know, your horizon, your understanding um, about karma and uh, uh, how life really happens. I have learned so much um, from past life regressions, um, from regressions on myself as well as um, regressions with uh, my clients uh, because we do not only look at the lifetime you know we also consult the higher self or the inner child or the divinities um, on what the lessons were and uh, how um, the programming of those lifetimes you know are still affecting the client in this lifetimes and we ask you know for a solution for a healing and a change um, and you know that is a really really actually one of the most important parts of a past life regression that there's actually a healing um, most clinical psychologists just uh, you know bring somebody into a past life and, and that's it <laughs> you know then okay you know you maybe killed your husband in a past life and you know, there is no solution of the guilt, etc., and no deeper understanding. So, uh, to bring things to a solution, you know, it's very, very important. So, um, well, let's just start with my personal uh, first past life regression. Um, the first thing uh, I saw about myself is was I was a, a merchant in Sparta and I weighed about 350 pounds. Now what you have to understand is that uh, to the Spartans uh, money and material wealth was uh, a very uh, looked down upon thing. You know they actually made it very difficult uh, to trade with money. You know they had huge bars of crude iron <laughs> as their currency and uh, so I definitely was an outcast and uh, plus I mean you have to understand the Spartans were a completely martial art elite society uh, you know as a Spartan you were trained from childhood in a martial arts you know hardcore stuff I mean they complained in the Greek Olympics that uh, eye gouging was out loud. They thought this was like a sissy thing. That's how hardcore they were. So, and I was 350 pounds. I was like Kulokulos, just gouging myself with delicatesses, you know. And the Spartans, they would uh, drink blood, <laughs> you know, just like the Maasai uh, do, and, uh, you know, sleep on the ground, completely austere. And there I was, this uh, fat glutton. <laughs> and so, you know, I asked you know, what to learn about uh, this lifetime, why I was shown this first. And I was told by spirit that, so that I would not judge fat people. Then, the next lifetime I saw about myself in that same session, I was a slave to a Spartan and uh, I, a, a young, I was a young, young man and I seduced him, I was a homosexual and um, the, the lesson from that was that I would not judge 
any homosexuals for what they were because I was one myself in a previous lifetime. So I, I learned uh, humility, you know, and basically in later past life regression I found out to my personal shame mm. that uh, I have done many horrible things or many things that I might have looked down upon in this lifetime but I've done them myself so I have no right to judge anybody and actually uh, just by going through the experiences you know uh, we can learn you know we learn by trial and error um, you know okay this is has not such good results so maybe I try something else there should be no guilt you know guilt is an illusion and uh, something used to control other people but uh, we were always told by spirit and by the divinities that uh, guilt is, is you know is this just a hindrance that stops us um, from receiving the love um, of God. You know, I mean, we are stopping ourselves from receiving the love of God. So, um, one of the most beautiful past life regressions I performed with a friend of mine was he. Uh, went back to a time, and, and we always asked before a regression that we may see the most beneficial lifetime that will teach the most. Uh, sometimes, of course, um, people come to me, they want to learn something like how to use the wand or how they uh, used to work as a healer in past lives. Um, you know, sometimes they have a problem like with their mate or Mr. Jar. Um, so many times, you know, past lives are, regressions are intentional. Um, uh, you know, but uh, most of the time, you know, we just ask spirit to show us, you know, that what, you know, we are supposed to see first. So in, in this case, uh, uh, my friend uh, went back to a lifetime uh, which was in Britain at the time of the Viking raids. So that's about, you know, 1000 uh, after Christ. And uh, it started, uh, he was standing in an orchard, you know, it was a wild orchard. And there was this uh, goddess <laughs> hoovering there, and he was sick. And this goddess, she would uh, point out to him um, certain herbs that he was supposed to take that would cure him. And to ask him, uh, how does she point them out to you? Does she like take a finger and say, oh, it's over there? And he said, no, no, no uh, just my gaze, um, you know, falls onto a certain herb suddenly and it's seems to be kind of glowing, it stands out, and that's how I know uh, that it is uh, good for me. So she showed him a whole bunch of herbs and he picked them and, you know, then she uh, disappeared. Um, and so this uh, man, uh, this recluse, uh, did not come from any traditional religion, uh, he was just, he just did not want uh, to live as humans and so you know we asked him uh, why don't you want to live in the village and he, you know he showed us to the side of the forest you know and there was a village and he described you know we basically my friend heard there were dogs barking there were women yelling and fighting so there was basically human disharmony. And then of course the Vikings came, <laughs> maybe in every few years, and you know, he saw that and there was raping and purging and torturing. Uh, you know. Uh, so it, it was uh, not a really good place. It was not peaceful. Uh, another uh, kind of wonderful thing about this lifetime was 
Uh, so this uh, hermit, he was just all by himself, and he f saw himself as very frail and weak. You know, they did not take much to die in those times. And so he would always ask the trees uh, of the forest if there was any dangerous animal around, you know, if everything was safe. And they would tell him. And uh, he also went to a cave, to a cave entrance, and he would ask the uh, rocks there laying in front uh, if there was any dangerous animal like a bear or wolf in that cave and they would tell him and uh, at night he would uh, lay just on his back and look at the stars and he would talk to the stars and the moon and they would talk back to him and they would tell him stories of what was happening on other planets they would uh, tell him things he would also talk to the wind And the wind would also tell him uh, what was happening in far, uh, far away places. Um, the, the, you know, it is one of the most important impressions from this lifetime um, to me was the utter humility that this man had. You know, he did not see himself as the master of nature or superior to any anything. You know, not superior to a tree not superior to a rock. He, <laughs> he saw them as equals, or maybe even as superior, and that they could teach him. And uh, it just was wonderful. How wonderful. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm moved. <laughs> uh, There were uh, other instances uh, where clients asked me they uh, wanted to uh, see how to use a crystal wand. And uh, I took them into Atlantis. I mean, of course, I took them back to where they suddenly they appeared in Atlantis and they saw themselves as a priest. For instance, in one case, um, he was like a. a doctor, you could say, doctor, maybe also social worker, and uh, people came to him with their problems, and he would um, just uh, open up his crown chakra and, and draw uh, the light uh, from a planet. I don't wanna, do not want to get into details, but you know, the, there was a planet where he was originally from, and he would take the energy from that planet and into his heart, and then send it, you know, through the wand into that person and clear, clear their force field, clear their aura, uh, and um, just to heal them. And I've done this with several people, and. Uh, and uh, then, you know, this person started practicing this, and within weeks, you know, had, had very good results. So, uh, what else is there? Oh, yeah. Uh, another person uh, wanted to uh, uh, learn also, you know, something positive that he could uh, use in this lifetime. And, uh, this person uh, saw himself in uh, medieval um, Britain. It uh, was uh, not Catholic. He uh, was a Protestant uh, priest, and he had a congregation. And so, you know, we saw him on Sunday. You know, after church, he was. Uh, mixing with this congregation in front of the church and the peculiar thing was that he uh, actually it was more like his higher self and you can imagine his higher self something like uh, his superior spirit was overshadowing him coming from up and down 
and the up comes more from the higher chakras. So he, his higher chakras above his head, not just the crown chakra. You know, there are several chakras above the head. So they were all open, and he was connecting through them and was overshadowing his body. And when he was talking to his parishioners, he was actually talking up their higher <laughs> chakras to their higher self. And uh, just, you know, asking their higher self what was going on, what the issue was. And then, you know, he would, uh, according to whatever information he would get, he would make the arrangement maybe with other parishioners and whatever. So he was not talking to the humans <laughs> at all. He was just talking from high self to high self. And that is uh, one of the uh, most beautiful uh, com ways of communications uh, that I've experienced. And it is actually uh, an embodiment of the Namaste, you know, the Hindu Namaste. Namas actually means obeisances and Te means you. But the meaning is that, you know, I'm greeting the High Self in you, you know, the Divine Part in you. And uh, there, you know, we actually saw it being practiced, not just something theoretical, you know, uh, but actually being practiced. And then this uh, person uh, became a bishop, and uh, he became the guru of the... Uh, other church leaders and um, but he was pretty much doing the same thing but just you know on a, on a higher level with people that had more influence and then uh, uh, I wanted that person to see you know how he would die and you know because it is very nice um, you know to experience you know go through a dying process, you know, that will take away the fear of dying, you know, I mean, what a great gift that is. And so this bishop was sitting on a bench in the herbal garden in the monastery, and he just floated out of his body very peacefully. And there were like this medieval type angels all around, and of course, you know, we know these are holographic projections. Um, they're not really <laughs> having wings, <laughs> you know. This is just a, a, a way that uh, painters depicted them, you know. They're just radiant beings of light, and orbs of light, but for us humans, you know, they take those shapes, you know, to communicate. Uh, with them, you know, with certain symbolism, etc., etc. That's just a way to interface with humans. You know, anthropomorphization, this is called. And, you know, they were playing those big trumpets. <laughs> and he would just float into heaven, you know, wonderful, wonderful. It looked like a medieval painting. And it was just uh, gorgeous to see that. Um, another past life regression was somebody that uh, wanted to see, uh, that wanted to improve his teaching skills. And, uh, you know, so uh, the idea was to see if he was a teacher in, in past lives, you know, maybe skills uh, that he already knew but had forgotten, and, you know, those things are easy to revive. And so he was shown uh, how he was the chief of an uh, African tribe. And of course there was a lot of warfare going on. And so what he did is uh, everybody in his village, every male, had to spend two hours a day dedicated uh, to the defense of the village. and. This uh, happened in the following way. Uh, they had a program they would work out, you know, just I mean, basically lift weights, uh, run, jump, practice martial arts every day, two hours. Those guys were buff. Oh my God, they were just 
gorgeous and buff and they were fierce <laughs> and they were expert they were just all ninjas like black ninjas and they were expert and nobody dared even mess with them and they had peace you know they were peace they had peace they were healthy they were happy you know and that nobody even thought about messing with them. And they were peaceful. You know, they did not raid anybody else, you know, everybody left them alone just by reputation. <laughs> wonderful idea, wonderful idea. Um, there are also uh, other things, you know, uh, not just past lives um, that uh, people experience, you know, in those travels, you know, but once you're in a higher state of consciousness, you can not only travel into past lives, uh, you can also travel into the future, or you can, um, possible futures, of course, uh, or you can also, you know, see parallel lives. So I, uh, there was a young boy, let's say 13, 14 years old, and he just loved flying, you know. And I said, "Hey, come on, let's, uh, you know, try uh, try a regression, you know. Let's see uh, what's uh, going on, you know. Where does that come from? Because the uh, flying hasn't been <laughs> going on for such a long time in human history. And uh, so, first of all, he was shown how he uh, was." A bomber pilot uh, that got shot down, uh, as, and uh, you know he survived as a with a parachute, and he was captivated, and uh, then he was put into a prison camp, you know where he died um, after you know months, uh, and so this was in World War Two, and. Uh, uh, from there he uh, went to uh, into another lifetime and that was really far out. Uh, first it was a little bit confusing. So uh, he became aware of having a body and you know when he looked around things were strange. Uh, there were people there but the pets they looked different. I think they had like six legs. <laughs> Things were different there, and so I had him walk around the city, uh, look at the stores and this and that, and he described it as good as he could. I mean, he was just a, a young boy. And uh, then, you know, I said, okay, let's uh, get to the point here, you know, what does this have to do with flying? And then he went to the airport and boarded a spacecraft. <laughs> and that spacecraft, uh, traveled to the moon and he uh, described you know how he was piloting the spacecraft and he, how he was uh, making certain transmissions to stations that were behind the moon I mean from our point of view and then he uh, made also he flew on and then he made transmissions to the beings that were in the sun. And now this boy had no idea about any new age law or conspiracy theory, nothing of that. So I said, the sun and their being in the sun, isn't that hot? And he said, oh no, oh no, no, it's not hot at all. And actually the most important, the most powerful beings, you know, uh, they are in the sun. <laughs> This is where the big shots are. <laughs> and uh, then he flew around the earth, you know, did some missions and flew back. So basically we tapped into a parallel lifetime of his. And uh, very, very interesting. Um, there was another case uh, where a, a, a young man in his 30s came to me. Uh, just very open, very highly educated, a professor, um, 
beautiful, you know, good karma all around, you know, a nice body, nice features, you know, really good karma. And so, uh, you know, we ask Spirit, you know, now show him, you know, what, uh, you know, what is there to learn for him, because this person did not have any uh, problems, you know, he just was curious. And so uh, I, I brought him to a higher plane, and we had him land, uh, you know, where Spirit wanted him. And <laughs> he started describing columns, big, nice columns, Greek style. They are this huge, beautiful people, and they have crowns. <laughs> and they have those flowing robes. And he said, this looks like the Olymp, <laughs> you know. And then uh, one of those beings, you know, saw him, and he said, what are you doing here? <laughs> and so he got kicked out. <laughs> so, um, uh, I would say, you know, he was an expansion from uh, one of those Olympian gods. And uh, as we are already going a little bit to the far side, uh, um, yeah, let's uh, talk about adventures, you know, uh, uh, and this is uh, way beyond what uh, you will ever experience with a clinical psychologist hypnotizing you. And if you are, uh, you know, a professional you know, hypnotist, uh, you maybe you can learn something. Well, anyhow, so, you know, I had this uh, client come uh, with certain problems, and I just uh, just barely started, you know, with a relaxation induction. <laughs> when uh, my client started doing yoga exercises, um, doing asanas, and you know, I, I know Hatha yoga and Kundalini yoga. I mean, I'm not a perfected at, at those arts, but uh, you know, I know my share of those. And I practice those, you know, to stay healthy, you know, I'm not very dedicated, you know, just a, a lazy yogi. Uh, but this was pretty advanced stuff. <laughs> and so I asked my client, I had the suspicion, I asked my client, did you, do you know yoga, do you know Hatha yoga? And my client said, no. <laughs> and, um... I've had experienced uh, something like this myself, where I basically was shown how to do asanas perfectly. You know, I was guided internally. You know, I just watched my body do asanas, and you know, I was shown how to relax and, and this and that. And so I mean, I, I learned really fast the essence of yoga, I could say. You know, and uh, so I explained to my client that uh, yeah, do not freak out here, you know, just go with it, you know, this is okay, you know, you're safe, and, you know, of course, I had invoked the angels and all that, uh, these are called Kriyas, you know, I mean, I'm initiated into Kriya Yoga by Muktananda, and uh, so, you know, I knew about Kriyas, but I've never seen, you know, Kriyas happening uh, with <laughs> uh, somebody, uh, that wasn't even initiated, so, you know, I said, just just go with it, you know, and so my client, you know, did all kinds of, of postures, and uh, so then I said, you know, uh, why don't you just ask, you know, just ask, uh, is this a part of myself that is doing this, or is this an outside force, maybe a yogi that stepped into my body that is doing this? And so uh, my client answered, oh, it's an yogi, it's an outside force. So uh, we asked uh, the yogi to please introduce <laughs> himself. And he did, you know, he showed himself. And my client described him, you know. He had those uh, white stripes <laughs> across his forehead. And <laughs> So I knew he was a Shivite, and we asked for his name, and he said his name was Benares, which is uh, the old name uh, for Varanasi. 
and I, I've been in Varanasi, you know, I lived there for, for two weeks, and I know that I lived there in past lives. Um, so, anyhow, but she had no ideas about, you know, anything, you know, yoga. <laughs> it was completely new to her, you know, there was no way that she could make that up. And uh, so I asked, uh, do we know each other, you know, do you know my client? And uh, Benares answered, uh, yes. <laughs> um, she, he said, uh, your client had been a disciple, you know, around, you know, the 16th century in um, Benares. And uh, he was too. And uh, he said, you know, he uh, reached uh, Mukti enlightenment and uh, it means he did not have to incarnate in any body anymore uh, but my client has not and so you know he came to help out uh, that's just a little <laughs> story on the on the far side here um, Well, yeah, let's uh, talk about some other general issues about past life regression. Uh, in general, I find that uh, females uh, have a lot easier time, you know, into relaxing and going into a trance. They are very, very visual, and uh, it's quite, quite easy. Whereas uh, with males. Uh, you know, percentage-wise, it is not so easy. You know, you cannot do a. Uh, actually, I find you cannot do a past life regression with every person. Um, they have to be maybe more sensitive, open-minded. You could maybe say gifted, um, maybe of a higher vibration. Um, I find that uh, the many native people, you know, it is very easy. You know. But the more westernized they are, uh, kind of the more difficult it gets, <laughs> you could say. It's maybe like compare, you know, a dog to a wolf. You know, the dog has lost his natural instincts. You know, even though, I mean, a shepherd doesn't have the same biting power of a wolf either. And uh, so, uh, and of course, there is also the, uh, the thing where. Um, being able to let go, you know, that's really important, you know, people that uh, cannot let go, uh, they have a hard time, you know, so I had clients, you know, in one, one case it was a female and she could not let go and, you know, we, we asked, actually, you know, I asked for her and uh, basically what we found out that uh, I mean, I found out, and she confirmed it that uh, you know, as a as a little daughter, you know, she had to defend the family from a controlling, overbearing father. She always had to take charge. You know, it was a survival thing for her. So for her, it was very, very difficult to let go, and I had to use other modalities, you know, to help that person. You know, that is why a healer should know all kinds of modalities, anything from hands on healing, Reiki, you know, Qigong, to uh, breath work, you know, to NLP tapping, you know, you know, not everybody responds well to the same medicine, right? And, um, you know, then of course with males, you know, uh, they also have a hard time, you know, so surrendering or you know, and letting go <laughs> to another male, uh, you know, but uh, for some it's not a problem at all. Uh, what else is there? Yeah, there is uh, also, you know, a deep trance or light trance. Uh, for some people, uh, I found, uh, you know, you get them into a trance and they, you know, these are generally, generally like really mentally active people, kind of nervous. And, you know, as soon as you get to some juicy part, you know, where something interesting is happening, something of value, uh, whoops, you know, they snap back out of their relaxed state, 
you know, open their eyes and start analyzing and yapping about it. Ah, this and this happens. Yeah, you know, this is something to do with my mother and father, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you got to start all over again, you know, get them into a relaxed state. You know. uh, the principles basically are that, you know, the deeper, you know, you can relax your physical body, you know, the more uh, you can open, you know, to your more spiritual aspects, you know, um, there's certainly a lot of shatter, you know, from the body, from the body sensation, and of course when you're seeing and hearing, you know, these are all interferences, you know, and we cannot pay attention to the inner processes, so, you know, you try to relax the person, and, um, uh, and then also, you know, elevate, you know, their consciousness through uh, guided meditation. Um, bring them into a higher vibration, maybe open their chakras. So I'm not only using, um, let's say, a guided meditation, you know, I, I use the wand, you know, to clear uh, their chakras and integrate them. And I use the conch, you know, to clear uh, growth shatter in the physical body and in the subtle body and you know I call in the angels and you know I show them how to run love first so that is all you know raising the vibration and uh, the higher your vibration you know you more you have access you know to those uh, mystical uh, qualities you know the, that you basically have access to any type of knowledge you know, whether it's past lives, or, you know, why did this happen, or you communicate with the divinities and angels and um, loved ones that have passed on, you know, that is um, also, you know, quite important, very healing for some people. I, I know in the Bible, you know, it, you know, it talks about not to talk to the dead ones, and I, I completely agree with that. You know, we should not ask the dead ones for advice, you know, that is, they're not much smarter than, <laughs> than when they were in a human form, you know, unless they went to heaven, you know, and then they're basically, you know, angelic beings, uh, fifth dimensional beings, uh, but, you know, ghosts, you know, there is nothing to, uh, to learn from them, you know, they basically very d disturbed humans, you know, I mean, a healthy human, you know, ascends to the higher dimensions, um, but maybe some other time about that. So anyhow, uh, so in many cases, you know, there is unfinished business, you know, with grandmother or with the husband, you know, uh, that certain things were not said, that certain things were not expressed, you know, that there is guilt and, and this and that. And so, you know, I, I, I put my clients into a higher consciousness, and then I call, you know, in daddy or mother, you know, and uh, they can talk with each other, you know, uh, and communicate. And in many cases, like, you know, the father died very young, and the child has always been missing, you know, the fatherly influence. and. Now uh, the child, you know, and we would of course take the inner child, you know, can communicate with the father and find out, you know, why the father had to die, you know, what the divine plan was there, you know, why maybe the soul chose that father for the incarnation. And then of course the most important is when, you know, they exchange love, and uh, which is like a very powerful energy, you know, um, when it's done right. And, you know, there's a lot of crying and a lot of healing going on. And, you know, the person you know, feels just much more whole. And, um, of course, if the father is a ghost, you know, I make sure, you know, we, we lead him into heaven. You know, uh, I don't banish ghosts, you know, I always, uh, you know, even if they come from the dark side, you know, uh, I always get them into heaven. You know, that's where they're supposed to be, and, you know, it's, they have no business down here, and they're just suffering here, you know, and they'd be so much happier in heaven. So, uh, uh, that's, you know, very, very healing, you know. Uh, 
talking with, with the mother, you know, where there was always a problem, you know, this and that, and, you know, just talking with the mother and, you know, asking the mother why she, was she so whacked out, so crazy, you know, and then we find out, yeah, you know, the mother was abused and her mother was even crazy. <laughs> You know, and then maybe uh, a person that was very angry with the mother, um, um, you know, uh, bec becomes very compassionate, you know, and understands, you know, why the mother was so crazy and was not able to be a better mother. And, you know, there can be forgiveness, you know, and uh, many times, you know, I call in the angels or Jesus or Mother Mary, you know, it really depends on you know, what the preferences are of the people, you know, I just, you know, I generally I'm being guided on that, you know, and uh, then, um, you know, there is, you know, a healing done, and, uh, you know, that's the whole idea, you know, uh, uh, you know, that there is healing, you know, and when there is this healing, um, that is not just imaginary, you know, so many times, I mean, people just cry, and it's a healing crying, you know, that a lot of tension um, is being released, or it's a crying of love, you know, which is a spiritual ecstasy. It's a wonderful thing if you cry because the love is so intense. Um, or it's a crying of forgiveness, you know, of letting go, and, you know, you can really, people can feel, you know, and I can feel, you know, how the heart chakra is opening, you know, how the heart becomes lighter, and uh, uh, it's 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 just wonderful, you know, when when this happens. Um, and you know, many times, you know, there when there was a lot of anger and darkness, you know, we can see like a dark bl blurb. It's like black smoke or something like that in the heart or maybe in the liver or other organs. You know, these are emotions or energies that have been held there sometimes for lifetimes and then you know we ask the angels or Jesus or Mary you know to take that out you know and then you can really feel you know how uh, you know uh, people's breath patterns change you know and they start feeling lighter and start tingling all over the body <laughs> That's uh, very, very wonderful. It becomes very obvious, you know, um, to anybody experiencing that, that, uh, you know, uh, important things are happening. It's not just an imagination. And even if it would be imagination, let's say we call it Gestalt therapy, you know, it's just maybe all a projection of the subconscious, you know. We still have the results, you know, the... Uh, Conflicts are resolved, insights are being uh, given, uh, forgiveness is there, you know, etc., uh, etc., et you know, it, it works, it works. So my friends, I think that it is, uh, there will be more videos, uh, there is so much more to talk about, uh, you know, maybe next time we talk about uh, uh, the uh, getting into the mark, you know, getting into the past lives that are not so nice, but you know, where we have to resolve those, you know, the dead, right, the dead rats in our subconscious, <laughs> the, the stuff that we don't want to see, <laughs> you know, the the old anger, you know, the uh, the stuff that's haunting us, you know, the dark side in us. Uh, uh, maybe next time. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you would like to have any past life regressions performed, you know, I can do this quite easily over the phone. Uh, I prefer Skype. Uh, send me an email so we can send something up. I uh, take love donations. Um, if you like, you know, subscribe uh, to my videos. Uh, or ask me some questions, send me a message and or uh, you know uh, turn on your friends uh, to this if you think it may help them namaste